got a lot to do. I better get going. <laughs> I can go a little faster, I guess. Hi, I'm Kevin Hill. And today we're gonna to do a beautiful little fall time scene in acrylic, it should be a lot of fun. Remember that we're still offering our paintings for sale on the website, so as soon as you see this video, be sure to check the link in the description. If you see one you like there, snatch it up quick because they're always constantly changing. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today here with some white and a little yellow and maybe a little more, there's some yellow ochre. Now I know you're, you're wondering why my palette looks this way. Um, I just did a terrible job of laying out my paints this morning and I didn't want to change it. So there you go. <laughs> oh boy, it's one of those days already. You'll see that I've got just a, a very kind of neutral green, just something to tone the canvas. What's nice is that'll kind of shine through and give it a nice coolness to the painting. You could use something like blue. Now if you do something like red, then it would shine through and have a nice warmth. But there's so much warm colors happening in this painting, I thought kind of an underlying green coming through would look really pretty. We'll see. <laughs> Who knows, right? There. And maybe as you go up, it just gets a little more ochre-y. There, now I'm blending just a little bit of light blue down into the rest of that sky. And if of course, you gotta go quick here, painting with acrylics. And depending on the time of year and how, how warm you keep it in your house, this is gonna dry, you know, at different speeds. But it's gonna be close to maybe like three minutes. So you'll see right down here, it's already setting up. That's why I'm getting that scratchiness. That's okay, we're gonna have trees there. But that's actually pretty good. I'm, I'm, I am satisfied with that blend. That's enough blending. We can let that completely dry and float some other clouds and stuff on top, but it's pretty good for now. What we'll do is we'll just grab, just grab another brush. I'm gonna start, this is a little number four bristle brush. I'm gonna start working here in the background if it's not too, if it's not too wet. Just subtle. See how we have those subtle, subtle things in the background? Just subtle little trees. Now I notice I'm cutting through the paint just a little bit. I'm okay with that. It's not enough to worry about. So we'll create these distant misty trees back here. There, maybe keep your brush strokes going down so when you do cut through the paint, it looks like little tree trunks. Okay, we'll do lots of different layers of these. And we'll put some evergreens in here. There'll be a lot of mist. Oh, that's pretty right there. Almost just impressionistic blobby trees is all we're looking for. Actually, I like those lighter, lighter yellow hits. Use a little more pressure. Cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in some darker bits here. These little background tree smudges are almost dry. The sky is now dry. We're going to float some clouds and mist in through this background. Um, I don't know. The light's kind of coming from the right today. That, that was originally going to be like a sun back there, but it ended up being trees, and I, I like it better that way. So, that's kind of cool. Isn't it fun when things change and it works out better? Oh, that's great. All right, now I'm just working on, on getting some pine trees in here before we go too, too far. I've got just kind of this mid-tone green. Nothing, nothing too crazy. And just bringing out basic shapes here. Nothing too detailed, of course. If you go too detailed, <laughs> what a waste of time. I mean, I guess it won't hurt the painting, but you'll probably be out of time. <laughs> so I'm gonna go very quick and very loose, just enough detail to show that there is a tree. See, just like that, good enough. You can add the feeling of a little shadow underneath a couple of these larger leaf trees if you want to, but you don't have to. Nice. I'm gonna just dip into my foundation medium, which just comes in this little bottle. This is runny, so you can't put it, uh, can't put it on the palette. It slips off onto the floor. If you don't have any of that, you should uh, go to the website and check it out. It helps a lot. Helps the paint slide along in a, in a controlled way. I do use water occasionally, but it's less controllable. And I'm just playing around up here, kind of waiting for this area to dry. Yep, not even close. <laughs> There's several layers of paint on there, and it may take it up to like 10 minutes to dry. Now that you couldn't blend during that time, but it will be tacky for about that amount of time. You only get about 
three minutes, four minutes tops of good blending time. All right, that looks pretty decent. See, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just playing, or literally just playing around, kind of doing nothing in particular, trying to make some grass, obviously, but just using different colors, this flat blender brush, just trying to, just trying to get some, I'll turn it up like this maybe, just trying to get some action going. All right, how does that look? Not bad, not bad. It's a, almost a little too center. I love light in the middle, but that's almost a little too much for this particular scene. So I'll drag that all the way out to the side, at least over here. Good. Now this here is wet. I'm able to blend right into it. That is not bad. Some of these big chunkies, we'll take those down with a different brush. I'm just, for the most part, getting it in quick and just having fun. Pretty much all I'm doing is just, just enjoying this grass area, waiting for the other stuff to dry. I need some more paint soon. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm going to take a little bit of transparent white. You just thin it down with a little bit of your foundation medium. There it is right there. I, I did put a little yellow in it as well, just so it's not pure white. It, it matches the painting a whole lot better. This background is definitely dry. I gave it plenty of time. That is so important. If it's not dry, oh, bad things will happen. You're going to cut right through that paint and you're not going to be happy with it at all. It's going to go right back down to green and that's not going to look good. So definitely, definitely be careful. Also, I haven't really been talking about this, but I like to squirt my paints to make sure that uh, they don't dry out too quick. They are going to dry out, but at least it slows it down a little. There. Nice. And see how I'm just floating these layers of mist. Okay. Right in through here. Just, <laughs> just double checking there. That looks really good. I like it. It's a lot of fun. Creates a, a nice effect. Ooh. It's a little thick there, but that's okay. If we're quick, we can just move it right around. You won't gotta watch those hard edges though when you do that, when you put that color down, you don't want there to be any hard edges left over. So for instance, you see that right there? I would not leave that. You get up here and you take care of those immediately. Otherwise they get locked in. Good. <laughs> it's not oil. You can't, uh, you can't go back and blend later. You gotta get all your blending done right away. Looks good. Let me stand back. Yeah, I like the way that that's starting to, start to turn out. But one nice thing about blending, you know, doing this dry brush blending, which is exactly what we're doing. One nice thing about this is it's extremely controllable. You can build it up slowly using layers and you can get it just where you want it. And look at this, like for instance, you can just float that mist right over that tree and you see the tree perfectly and you don't need to worry about any mud. So there's, there's definitely has its advantages as well. So it's not like, it's not like it's all disadvantage when it comes to blending in acrylic. And that's of course the, the number one complaint about acrylic, right? Blending. But it's actually, once you kind of figure out how to dry brush blend, which is really just glazing, it's really pretty forgiving and pretty controllable. Well, maybe not so much forgiving, but it is controllable. The worst thing that happens is you have to put a treat back in, you know, or, or put something over the mist and do it again. So now that our little clouds or mist or whatever that is back there is dry, I'm going to just place in a few more trees. This time I'm doing it with the round brush because I want them to be foggy here at the bottom. and It creates a nice soft edge that way. That looks pretty good. That's not half bad right there. So kind of some large trees there, a couple large trees there, a little bit almost transparent so you get this you know glazed look it's kind of pretty I don't know we could do a little more action right here not too much we do have these larger trees this is just be a waste of time but I'll stick a little there just for fun I don't think it's gonna show all right that's cool and then they're smaller as you go here toward the background <laughs> like that maybe just one taller right there good it's okay to have a little sharpness at the top, but then I want them to fade out as they go to the bottom. Great. And anywhere that kind of looks incomplete, you can just feather a little more of this green over that area. See, it looked just a little fuzzy there. Not fuzzy, but um, 
like dry, scratchy, kind of just like we didn't paint enough. And it's just part of acrylics, you know, having to layer them a little more sometimes, depending on how well they cover the first time, which of course depends on how much moisture is in the brush. <laughs> That's good. So I see some of the, I see some of those misty trees in the background and maybe just to finish up this area, grab a little more of our yellows and just place on a few more of our autumn trees right over this and do it again, kind of in a misty fashion like this. <laughs> yeah, that works. Now I've got the angle filbert. I'm going to drop in a lot of these little leaves here to this tree. You'll see I've got a almost too much, too much purple mixed up, but that's okay. I just kept on tweaking it, changing it, making it exactly what I want. And before too long, whoops, I had a lot of paint. That, that tree is actually a little too far to the left. Let's move it over here to the right and make it a little bigger. There, that's nice. Maybe this one doesn't go off, but the one next door, it'll go off. Nice, look at that. This brush really makes it easy to easy to get these leaves quickly. See that? Just drop them in using these little X strokes, little little comma strokes, whatever you want to call them. And then maybe down here, because it's kind of got a flat edge, you can fill in quick. Maybe even make it a little little darker. Of course, this is the base tone to our yellow tree. I think it'll be really pretty. Going complimentary colors today. Ooh, we're getting fancy. <laughs> Now I'm adding on all of the really fun parts, the little bright highlights. I changed to the to the little micro filbert brush. This does a really good job of getting in tighter places. So we did the whole tree pretty quick. Now I'm sort of cleaning it up and I'm taking full advantage of being able to rest my hand down. This is a, this is nice. I don't usually get to do that. That's fun. There, just dragging out these little bits of detail. I'm trying to be a little bit controlled, but not too controlled. Mostly what I want is these fine little bits coming out. I, I, I really want, kind of hard to explain, you know, I don't want to just get up here and do my thing like this because I want these little tiny wispy areas. I just think that looks so cool. So anyway, maybe a little more up in here and it's okay to, you know, up here I see dark and I see mid-tone and then highlight. It's okay to put the highlight in and then come back and put your other highlights, which are not quite as bright on after the fact, but you don't want to jump from mid-tone down here to pure white. That wouldn't look good. There's my, uh, there's my color, by the way. It's not actually white. Sure is close. <laughs> there. But you just see how that really helps to just make this whole area shine. We're going to put some beautiful bright stuff in here, some bright stuff on the grass. We've got rocks, we've got more mist, a lot more layers coming here. Wow, we got a lot to do. I better get going. <laughs> And go a little faster, I guess. There, I'm just finishing up this red tree. It was painted really the same way, actually a lot faster. There's less color in it, fewer colors there. So that works out. I'm gonna set that brush. Actually, you wanna make sure you dip it in your water and then set it aside. Otherwise it'll get dried out and that's not good. You'd be buying another brush. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna take my number four brush and just kind of stipple it into just random dark colors and everything else. <laughs> it doesn't actually matter too much what it is. All right, well, that looks like a mess. <laughs> Perfect, that's great. All right, now up here, I'm gonna tap in just the outline of a shrub or bush or something like that. Not a tree, definitely not a tree. It's not that far away. A little darker, <laughs> a little darker at the bottom. Good. Sometimes you get so much paint in that brush and you're not, not able to actually change the color. If that happens, what you can do is just go back and, you know, paint over that area again. Okay, maybe thick there. Good. Over here we can do just a couple of bits. Maybe there's some bushes there or we'll just, I don't know, we'll mess around with that more later. Now here on the water, actually I'm going to raise this water up. So I'm just going to tweak some things around. I'm going to raise that water up. Here's my palette. It's a big mess. Time to clean it up. There, just to change the, just change the shape of that water a little. Good. And let's see. Now maybe just while this is wet, we can go ahead and get at least a first color on, on this little bush here. 
and then we'll wait to finish it until it dries, of course. It'll be done pretty much the same way. There, just kind of finishing up, dropping in a couple of smudgy rocks. One nice thing about acrylic is the, uh, the finger blending technique. All right, now, that's kind of fun, but what's more fun is highlighting it. Let's do that right now. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're getting toward the end, you can tell. It's a little white, a little whatever that is. Who knows, it's all mixed together at this point. Actually, tell you what, we do know that it's kind of cool, so let's warm it up with a little bit of, who else, you know, who knows what else that is, right? Let's warm it up with a little bit of that. Yes, it is definitely getting late. <laughs> nice. Mm. So just these little bits and smudges to create the form of these rocks. The rocks are not all separate. Each one kind of touches another. And that's a secret here to make this look much better than, than plunking a lot of little bowling balls out here in the middle of the field. That wouldn't look too good. There, like it. I think that works. Mm, good, just gonna slice a little highlight up on those. Of course, we're gonna do this fairly quickly and randomly because we got we got some grass coming up and over all of this. There. Now down here in that spot, that light spot, I might just get a little more yellow just for the sake of changing it. Nice. You could do this with the, uh, the micro filbert if, you, if you'd like to. Then we may switch to that for some of the smaller rocks. I kind of doubt it. Just tilting the brush helps. Like this. Mm, isn't that kind of pretty? You know, it doesn't hurt to get a little reflection down here where you got that color on your brush. There you go. Of course, this is dry. What I'm doing is I'm just pulling a dry brush stroke down and then hitting it with my finger. Makes a nice little reflection, doesn't it? Pretty simple. Let's get this big rock started. Good. Maybe a little bit of our medium just to help it slide. Now I'm going to mix together. Pretty dry here on a fan brush. Not really adding any water or medium, just dry. I'm just going to tap the brush. Now the brush was also dry. You know, it was, I didn't paint with it at all today. So it kind of helps to have multiple brushes going. You know, we can keep one dry if you need to. If not, you can, uh, I don't know, just dry it off really well with a paper towel. I usually like to have one brush for light, one, one brush for dark. So you can pop around and do stuff like this. Especially when it comes to something like you know, even like the flat brushes, the filberts, the, uh, the fans, those are really good to have multiples of. You could get away maybe without the smaller ones, but might as well have them all, right? There, look at that. Just trying to seat those rocks right back into the painting. That looks good. These are not, not tall rocks, and this is not really tall grass, so I'm not worried about a bunch of shadows going all over the place. You know, it's just going to be fine that, like that. However, having said that, <laughs> having said that, I am going to maybe just get a touch of a shadowy tone just to, just to break it up a little. Not much. Not. Now, also I should mention again, if you're interested in owning this exact painting, jump on the website as soon as you see this, as soon as you see this video go up. And hopefully you'll get it. If not, there are other originals up there you could you could look at too. Mm. But it's kind of fun to have the new one, right? <laughs> you don't even have to wait. I, I sold a couple of my oil paintings recently. My customers sort of had to wait for them to dry. But that's all right. You won't have that with the acrylic painting. Oh yeah. That's great, just bury those rocks with a little, little light grass. Alright, and that kind of finishes it up. We need to get the, the liner brush out soon. Now one of the last things that we're going to do up here, of course, is the liner brush. How can you not end with the liner brush, right? Just get a few of these blades of grass in them, kind of going for light ones first, dark ones later. It's just kind of a nice way to go because if you overdo the light ones, you can bring your dark ones right back over. So easy. This uh, this liner brush makes it 
makes it a little simpler. Once you get a hang, obviously it takes just a minute of practice to learn it, that's okay. But once you get the hang of it, oh, you're gonna like it. Really gonna like it. There, that looks pretty decent. Ah, way too tall for grass. That's a limb. <laughs> oh boy. There, gotta maybe even bring a couple of branches out. Just have a, a little bush in front. See how you can be flexible. You don't need to worry about it when weird stuff happens. Believe me, weird stuff is going to happen, and that's okay. Mm, I like that. So anyway, we'll just play around with the liner brush here and put on these last little details. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, our original paintings for sale, our DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching.